Hi, welcome to Social Research Insights. The mission of Social Research Insights is to promote open source software for both academic and corporate research needs. In this video cast, I am going to explain how to do paid sample T test in PSPP. The PSPP is open source alternative to IBM SPSS. It has almost similar appearance as well as mechanisms to perform statistical analysis through its uh, well-known uh, menu analyze. Uh, in this video, as I said, I'm going to explain you the paid sample t-test where it is where I it is available through the second uh, uh, sub-menu under the menu analyze. We just have to go to the paid sample t-test to perform the 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 t test on the sample data okay and this is actually the 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 data which i simulated through through pspp syntax um, in my earlier video cast where i explained the observation of means and the same data i'm going to use in order to compute the uh, t statistic for this sample which is collected as in pairs the paid sample is none other than the samples of any any two samples that are that are related with each other by another uh, factor uh, known as occupation, age, income, uh, 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 education, etc. In this uh, video, the data which I am using is actually the sample data with 30 sample respondents and three variables. And this is a paid sample because uh, the individual number one or the respondent number one income was uh, sixty four four thousand bucks when uh, when the data was collected uh, during the during, during the f first sampling and his income turned to be twenty thousand bucks uh, when the data was collected at the time of second sampling. I mean, I can say that the 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 first respondent's income was sixty four thousand bucks during the du during du during first survey, and when the survey was repeated a second time, his income was observed as twenty thousand bucks, and his occupation was two, and there are two categories in this uh, variable occupation. It is in fact a factor. There are two factor levels: one comma two which may be like lower level employee one stands for lower level employee and two stands for middle level employee and we don't have the third uh, category uh, where we might construe that the three stands for top level of the organization so this is actually the data set and now I'm going to perform the uh, paid sample t-test which means uh, uh, the the objective of this uh, analysis is to is to know if at all that we can find any difference between these two sample data variables known as income one and income two. Okay, so uh, the 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 alternative hi the, the null hypothesis uh, for this uh, uh, t test is going to be. <coughs> The, the difference between means is not uh, significant so uh, taken uh, you know uh, the f first sample as x1 bar uh, and the second sample as x2 bar and these are the means of the samples and this is in fact uh, zero so so the difference uh, between the means of the samples is zero and the alternative hypothesis is going to be uh, the difference between these two means of these two samples is not equal to zero so which 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 means that it is actually the difference is significant and so that way we can simply okay this is how we have to formulate the hypothesis so the difference is denoted uh, by d an english letter small d so the first uh, i mean the null hypothesis is not significant and the alternative hypothesis it is significant so this is how 
the hypothesis goes for the t-test and this decision I mean the, the, the decision we, we have to take at some certain level of significance at some standard degrees of freedom which means after calculating the t-statistic that is going to be d bar which means the difference between the means divided by s x y multiplied square root of here we have two sample variables so we have uh, two we might be having two sample sizes so one by n1 sorry one by n2 so this is how this is together is called as the denominator is called as standard error and this ratio uh, will be equal to I mean approximately follows the standard t distribution so this at some certain degrees of freedom uh, at a given level of significance level I mean uh, significance that roughly follows the standard t distribution okay so with the help of this degrees of freedom and at some certain level of uh, significance so we compare it with the theoretical value and uh, finally we take the decision whether we are going to accept the al null hypothesis or alternative hypothesis. So this is actually the short description for for the paid sample t-test. In this case the standard error, the way we computed the standard error is also known as the, is the pooled sampled variance. So that uh, we got to be a bit uh, uh, careful while computing the pool sample variance that uh, actually the procedure to compute the pool sample variance is going to be S X Y is equal to N 1 minus 1 I mean the sample size minus 1 and S X square the variance of the first sample uh, uh, plus N 2 minus 1 uh, multiplied s y square which means the variance of the second sample divided by uh, n1 plus n2 minus 2 square root of so the ratio we have to get the square root of the entire ratio and this is the way we have to find the standard deviation uh, uh, for the two samples we call it as pooled variance okay this is referred as pool, pooled variance and this standard deviation we have to use it here in order to compute the standard error okay so this is the the entire procedure to perform the t uh, to compute the t statistic so I'm now going to do that go to the analyze compare means paid sample t test and you'll have the pop-up I mean context menu and uh, you just have to take the sample 1 into variable 1, sample 2 into variable 2 and as that look at the options it is by default 95% confidence interval it helps us to evaluate the difference at a given level of significance okay it anyway it is selected so it doesn't matter press ok so we have a nice result in case if you want uh, want to save it in an editable file like uh, open office or LibreOffice word file just go and export but in this case I don't want to do that in my previous videos I've explained how to export this output into LibreOffice word file so looking into the outputs so we have the means uh, sample size standard deviations and standard error now for the sample one we have the mean of the size 0.76 which means 76,000 bucks and for sample 2 we have 87,000 bucks for sample size 30 of each and next standard deviation this is 0 0.47, 0 0.65 so uh, this is pretty easy uh, so we can even uh, export this data into a LibreOffice Calcio spreadsheet application and there we can find as what is the standard deviation so it doesn't require any explanation but whereas coming to this uh, part of the first table that is standard error of the mean where it is actually 0 0.09 is none other than the standard deviation which means 0 0.47 divided by square root of n1 which is 30 so let's see that I'm going to show you so compute the standard error 
that's going to be the standard deviation 0 0.47 0 0.47 so equal to equal to 0.47 divided by square square root of mm, 30 sample size so that will be roughly 0 0.0858 uh, so approximately is equal to 0.9 so in the same uh, in a similar fashion we can also compute the standard error for the sec second sample that is income income 2 and that will be roughly equal to 0.12 okay and now coming to the second table here we have the linear by I mean association the relationship between the two samples that is 0.27 which is positive but not strong and it is not at all significant so there is nothing significant there is no significant relationship between between these two samples uh, mm, as far as the correlation coefficient is concerned and now we are going to the last table which is very per perhaps the most important table for our analysis and here this is the difference between the means you can just take the difference I mean the this minus 0 0.12 is actually the value that obtained by subtracting 0 0.87 from 0 0.76 so you can just go to the spreadsheet here you can perform that 0 0.76 minus 0 0.87 is it 7? yes so that is going to be minus 0 uh, 0.11 but whereas here I think uh, this in, in spreadsheet I have um, decimal places let me take uh, some 9 so that I will come to know ok so I don't know but anyway, roughly it is uh, 0.11 here. The spreadsheet shows, but but whereas the PSPP shows the value as 0.12, but but the, the difference is very minimum. Uh, next, the standard deviation. This is actually the value that we th that was that was calculated through this. Uh, this is actually as I as I explained in my my, my uh, th th through de uh, my demonstration. I explained a method to compute the standard deviation uh, for paid sample t test, and this is the procedure, and this is the formula that we use in order to compute the standard deviation for the paid sample t test. And this value, uh, 0 0.7, is actually computed through this formula. Okay, and next one, the the standard error of the mean. This is perhaps is most important f for us for the discussion that is the other formula which I explained in my demo uh, this is actually the, the, the standard error is standard deviation div multiplied uh, square root of 1 by n1 plus 1 by n2 so you can just do that perform that action in in, in spreadsheet and you can find it roughly equal to 1.13 okay so and this is the uh, the confidence interval at 95 percent the 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 limits uh, for the 95 percent confidence interval uh, the limits for the difference at 95 percent confidence interval and if you if we observe actually the this this is the mean difference exactly follows between the lower uh, the limit and the upper limit so so it is very clear that we are actually in agreement with the with the null hypothesis L anyway let us go ahead so the overall t statistic is actually minus 0.92 which is a negative value so it is very clear that it is a lower tail case and for a degrees of freedom to 29 and the p value is 0.37 even if we divide this by 2 0.37 for one tail test we are actually accepting the null hypothesis so for, 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 for a p-value 0.185 so which is actually the less uh, greater than 0 0.05 so there is nothing sig significant about the difference we need not worry about the difference uh, the income mm, values for these two uh, groups uh, for a given set of sample respondents more or less equal so that is how we have to conclude uh, about the mm, about the difference between the sample data of income information of two different groups uh, given some 
with their occupation so so finally we are just concluding that the the mean difference between these two groups is not at all significant and uh, they are more or less same so in this case actually we are accepting the null hypothesis so the data failed to show any evidence in support of alternate hypothesis thank you